before I did, if you have your Bibles, I'd ask that you turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66. And we're going to begin reading the very first verse. Isaiah 66. In the very first verse. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things have my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man, when I look, even to him that is poor of an, and a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word, word, he that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as, he, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abomination. Dear Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord, that brings us this way every time. Lord, we pray that you would uh, allow us to ever be mindful of what a privilege it is to come to your house. Lord, we pray that you'd ever make us mindful. It's not out of obligation, but out of worship that we come to hear uh, and study your word one more time this side of eternity. Lord, we pray that we'd understand and know all the things that you would have us to do. Bless this people tonight according to your mercy and grace we pray it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, we're going to be looking at some uh, things that you choose to do. Now, we as sovereign grace people sometimes get a little hung up on that word choose. But there are things you can choose to do. And, and just as scary, there's some things you can choose not to do. There are some things that we can use in and of the Lord, and there are some things that He gives us that we choose not to use. And listen, uh, one is as bad as the other. One, one is detrimental to a Christian life as the other. Notice in the first verse, Isaiah writing to Israel says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne. In other words, the abode of God, the heavens above, where God abides, that's where His throne is at. Now he goes on to say uh, that the earth is his footstool. Now there's a whole lot that's involved in that. But two main points. Number one, he's higher than we can recognize. He is so far above us that we don't even understand how big God is, how knowledgeable he is, how sinless he is. We can't even grasp it really. And then we see the earth down here as a footstool. You know what a footstool was used? It wasn't to keep you comfortable back in those days. It was a thing you propped your foot on to have your foot washed. When you went into someone's house, remember Mary? How she washed the Lord's feet? And remember how the Lord wanted to wash the, the apostles' feet? That's what it was. It was a footstool. That's how ungodly we are. This earth is his footstool. It's a, it's a stink. It, it, it is a nasty place to live. That is the earth. And so when we see how high and lifted up the Lord is, and how sinless he truly is, then we see, then we see what this is about. Then he says, notice this, where is the house you build unto me? In other words, I'm not too excited about buildings. You know, you, you see the great horse church and, and things like the Vatican that she built, just architecture uh, beyond, uh, beyond believing, but he says that's nothing. The, the, it means nothing to me. You know, it's good to have a place to meet, but you don't have to have a place to meet. He doesn't want that. He's not interested in that. And so we see, as the Lord's people... That he kind of says, listen, what, what are you giving me? What could you possibly do to please me? Verse 2. For all things have mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. Now, I really want you to get that. All things my hand have made. Everything in this room tonight, including the people, his hand has made. There's a reason that they're here, and there's things probably we can't see. Have you ever thought about it? Even little bugs 
that we can't even see, they're made by God and they're there for a reason. Uh, I remember Brother Garner Smith said one time, when I'm going down the highway and, and a bug hits my windshield, I know it's the hand of God. And he's right. He, he is that sovereign. He is in that much control. And so when we begin to think, oh, this is what I've done for the Lord. This is what I've done for the Lord. I've preached the gospel. I've handed out tracts. Just remember how nothing you really are. Remember how insignificant we are when we compare ourselves to God. Verse 3. He that killeth an ox is as, is as if he slew a man. Now he gets into, he begins to, con, uh, to uh, pull behavior and the law together. See, it was one time a year they killed an ox. And it was called, it was called to do by the Jewish law. Now that was a holy thing. And killing a man or a murderer was an unholy thing. And he says, listen, they're the same. How can you honor God? How could you possibly give me something worthwhile? He's talking about His holiness. He's talking about how great He really is. And He really wants us to know two things. How great He is and how poor and needy we are. You know why people aren't interested in being saved today? They don't know how poor and needy they really are. If anybody's ever revealed of the truth of how poor and needy they are, they're not gone from redemption. They're not far from salvation if they know how badly and desperately they need it. Notice what he says. Uh, he that sacrificeth a lamb, which was called for by the law, which was necessary, as he that cut off a dog's head. So, in, in one expression, you have a man doing the right thing and, and coming with a proper sacrifice. And he says, listen, that's no more significant than a dog's head. And you think how vile and a reproach it would be to go into the very holies of holies and offer a dog's head at the offer, at the altar. But that's, he says, listen, he was telling this, the Jewish law is insignificant. The Jewish law, especially the laws regarding uh, sacrifice, are nothing. They, 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 really are in, they, they, they really are not uh, what they appear to be. And, and so we find that he brings them down to this. In verse uh, 3, about halfway down. He that offer an oblation, as if he had offered swan's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he is blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. Now, uh, if you mark in your Bible, underline that, they have chosen their own ways. We like to think we're in control, don't we? You know what? It'd be a sad and a, and a scary thing to stand before God and say, hey, I did it my way. You know what? That's, that, that's, that, that's blasphemy. When you, when you stand before God and say, hey, I did it my way, it's blasphemy. Well, what we need to do is lend ourselves to the Lord. When Hannah brought Samuel down to the house of God, even before he was born, she said, I'll be lending to the Lord all the days of his life. That's how we need to be. We need to lend ourselves to the Lord. And here we find them, so we find in that day that they were saying, we'll do it, we'll do it our way. We'll choose our own path. We'll choose the way that we do it. So when we begin about thinking about what we're going to choose, remember, anytime you choose something, the responsibility of the decision belongs to you. And listen, we can choose some things. Can we choose Christ? I don't think so. Can we choose what we're going to do with our lives? You betcha. But you remember this. The choice you'll live with the rest of your life. You'll live with the rest of your life. If you preach the glorious gospel of Christ and you choose to do that, you'll be greatly blessed. If you choose to think about Jonah, he had two two choices, didn't he? He could go to Nineveh or he could go to Tarsus. And each of them had their own repercussions, did they not? Each of, them, each of them had an impact on his life. And you know what? This is the real thing. He ended up doing both, didn't he? 
Now, there was the good road to Nineveh, or there was the hard road to Nineveh. And he chose the hard road, and most people who choose hard roads is because they have a hard, hard heart. And that, that was Jonah's problem. And so we see as the Lord's people then that we are... We, are, we do have the ability to choose some things. Verse 4. Verse 4, the Lord speaking, I also will choose their delusions. Now, uh, when he was saying this, he was discussing these people that would rebel. He said, I will choose their delusions. You know what the delusion is? Hey, I'm alright. I'm a sovereign grace Baptist. I'm okay. You know what another strong delusion is? Well, I made a decision for Christ many years ago. That's a, that's a delusion. You better be very careful of it. Another delusion, I'm better than she is. I'm better than he is. That's a delusion. Listen, you are no better and no wise than anybody else. Any, if you believe anything, you know why they do differently than you? Because you received mercy and grace and they didn't. That's the only difference. That is the only difference. And so we see then, as we're looking into Isaiah's words, that the Lord promises those that, that choose this lifestyle that He will give them delusions. I will also choose their delusions and will, will bring their fears upon them because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Now, can we choose tonight to serve the Lord how we will? Yes. But you, you choose very carefully. This year of school has taught me one thing. That we, did, we definitely have a very changing culture on our hands. One that lacks respect. One, one that, um, one where uh, authority is despised. And you know what? Authority to some to some sense, has always been despised. Two rules. Two rules. Don't you touch the tree of life and don't you touch the tree of the knowledge and good, of good and evil. And they could not even do that. Rebellion. The first Samuel, first Samuel 12, 6 maybe, were rebellion as is unto the sin of witchcraft. See, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't resist that. So when, when we began to think about choosing, how do you make a good choice? Is it even possible for us as individuals to make good choices? And I would say, first of all, yes. If you are led of the Lord, you can make a good choice. If you've been born again, and you know, you know the Lord and the forgiveness of sin, you can make a good choice, but listen carefully, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. It has to take the leadership of the Lord Jesus. Now let's go way back uh, into the book of Genesis, and, and, and we find really what was the very first record of a, of a decision. Genesis chapter 6, in the very first verse, the, uh, the fall of man had already occurred. In Genesis chapter 6, we'll read the first verse to get the full thought. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Now, I want you to point, you at, to point out to you, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. This is Cain's race. It is not the, it is not the race of Seth. These are the rebels of God. These are the people that, that were, uh, were hated of God. Verse 2, And the sons of God, which are the children of Seth, so the daughters of men, which are the children of Cain, and they were fair. In other words, they were beautiful. They had something to look at by them. They took them wise of all they chose. They made, they made a decision, did they not? They, uh -huh. they chose some things. 
They took of wives of all they chose. Now when you begin to think about taking your life's mate, you better go deeper than skin deep. You better not go, you don't go by what they look like. Because, listen, beauty fades very quickly. And you know what? If she stays beautiful her whole life, but she can't cook and clean and do for people, you know what? You still don't have very much, do you? My, you know, the worst thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is choose a wife based on your lust. You will mess up every, every time. And these people, and we're talking about the sons of Seth, they had the right to choose. You know what they should have done? They should have chosen among their own race, their own people. They, 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 had, no, uh, they had no business fooling with the people of Canaan. But they did. It was their choice. They did it. So, uh, Nothing can be important when you begin to think about how it will impact your life is the mate that you choose to spend your life with. That, that's a careful decision. That's a decision that needs to be weighed out in prayer. That, that's a decision where you take the advice of others. And you know what? This is the thing to do. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. That attitude will mess you up. It's a... It, you know what? And most people don't discover that until it's way too late. It's way too late. They, they've done made so many poor decisions in their life, there's nothing left to do. And so we see that even the earliest decisions, the earliest choosing, if you will, they chose the wrong thing. They chose the wrong road. Look with me. Uh, in Genesis 13, we, we read of Lot. And he makes his decision like most of us make. He makes his choice like we all do. Genesis 13, verse 11. And Lot chose him out the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from the other. A few verses down, it says that Lot chose the well-watered plains of Jordan. How do you make his decision? What's going to feed my cattle? And what's going to benefit me the most? Financially. What's going to help me the most? What's going to put, enough, what's going to put more in this right here than anything else I could do? That's what, that's what he was interested in right there. You know what? You make all your decisions on this, you're going to be a man most miserable. And so we see then that, that and what happened to Lot? What's the, what was the ultimatum? You know what? First of all, Abraham had what was left, and that was the hilly mountains. That, that was the place where you had to really scruff around to find enough of that cattle to eat on. It had a little bit more work involved. But you know what? God accomplished His purpose. Number one, Lot should have never been with Him to start with. God will always accomplish His plan. And He says, you come out and you leave them behind. He, he, he was hard-headed, Abram, I mean. So He was demanding to take Lot, his brother's son, with Him. But you know what? Eventually, He did separate. It can be the good way, or it can be the hard way, or it can be the easy way. Unfortunately, most of us choose the hard way. Most of us choose the more difficult route. And so we find that Lot made this decision totally based on fleshly carnal stuff. And what do we find just a few years later? You look at your daughters. I look back at my two. And could you imagine saying, here, here's my daughter. Do with whatever you want to with her. But just don't mess with the angels. That's how messed up his brain had become. You know what I would? I'd say, well, you can kill me on the way, but you ain't getting these angels and you ain't getting my daughters either. See, that, that's a man with some sense, right? That, that's a man thinking spiritually. I may go down, but I'll go down fighting, right? And so we see then that these individuals, when they make a choice, they have to come with it. And ultimately, you find what? <laughs> the decisions he made, he was having children by his own daughters. Look at me in 2 Samuel chapter 6. 2 Samuel chapter 6. Verse 21. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And verse 21. And David said to Michelle, It was before the Lord 
It was before the Lord which chose me from my father and before all in his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I play before the Lord. Now, if you know your Bible, some people call her name my child, and some Michelle. I, I, I guess it can be said either way. But it was David's first wife, the daughter of Saul. Now, this individual, what she was doing was saying, Now, I don't want you going down to play for daddy anymore. I don't want you uh, to get in daddy's way. I don't want you to interrupt what my daddy's trying to do. And he says, listen, I play before the Lord. See, David had a choice, did he not? He could have said, all right, Michelle, we, uh, I'll just, this will be fine. I won't play no more. If that, what, if that what makes you and daddy happy, I just want to get another note. You know what? He had a decision to make. And we do too. You know what? Men, it ain't going to be every day that everybody's going to go, woohoo, thank you for standing up for the truth. Your wife may look at you and say, listen, it's my way or the highway, and I'll say, there's 79, get it right. Right? And it's easy to preach about, easy to say, walk harder when it comes down to it. But now this is the, this is the thing. She's not going to give an account for where you are. Now, if she leaves, it's on her, right? But you will give an account, if nothing else, for your house. Can you be accountable for someone else's sin? No. But can you be accountable for the decisions that are made in your house? Most certainly. Are you going to tithe? Or are you going to say, hey, you know, we don't need to be doing this? Are you going to say, we're going to homeschool, or I'll find a good Christian school to put them in, but they're not going down to the hell house called the public school? That make sense? And so there was a decision to make. And so David made the only spiritual decision that could be made. See, he, there's choices like this every day of our life. And most of the time, we miss them because we don't even know that they're before us. Right? And that's because we, we, we float on life streams so much that we don't even think about what's going on anymore. Every time you do something from as insignificant as buying Coke... Or getting, on, or getting on your phone, there's something that you choose to do. Is there not? Some way we choose to serve it. And, and so we see then as the Lord's people, certainly it ought to be that we make choices that best serves the Lord. That we make choices that would be pleasing unto Him and not pleasing to our uh, self. Now go with me to 2 Samuel chapter uh, uh, 2. 1 Samuel chapter 6. 1 Samuel chapter 6. Go with me to uh, Psalms chapter 119. Psalms 119. I'm going to read one verse there. Psalms 119. Now I will say this while you're turning over there. Psalms 119 and verse 30. If you remember the story uh, in uh, 1 Samuel 17, I think it is, um, that it said of David that he went out to fight the Philistine. And what did it say that he went to the brook and did? Chose five smooth stones. Did you ever think about why he chose those five? You know, we, we get the idea that he just went out there and threw five little pebbles in. But you know, it's a lot more to say that he picked up five stones and they chose five stones, right? I believe he was looking for some certain quality, don't you? Yeah. I had the girls out here this, this evening, and uh, Gracie and Bella, and they would pick up some rocks on this side of the porch and throw them, and throw them off this side of the porch and just back and forth, back and forth. And I wonder, you know, what makes it a difference? Because Grace B. Ryan, she showed me the rock she chose. See, David knew a little something about hunting, did he not? He, he knew a little something about taking care of the problem. Listen, when you can kill a bear uh, and kill a lion, you've got something. 
So he knew a little bit about protection, did he not? So when he got down there, he just wasn't looking for an average, everyday rock. He was choosing. This one would work. And then, you know what? He may have called that and said, that's not good enough. And then he saw, that, oh yeah, that would really be good. And he chose five smooth stones. Have you ever chose a, a smooth stone? Now, every one of y'all just about from Stroke County, there's not a lot of smooth stones here. Did you ever think about that? Now, when I was a kid, I could run up and down them creek banks at Carlisle, barefooted, never even. Now, I would be like doing like this if I tried. Because you know what? Those stones are not smooth. On the other side of that, up in East Tennessee, around the Rocky Mountains, uh, those rocks are perfectly round and perfectly smooth. And you know what? They've been running around on fast streams all the time. And it knocks off the edges. Makes them very circle and very specific. That, that's the kind of things that David was looking for. Now, I ask you this. What stones have you chose out today? Anger? Malice? Contempt? See, we, we choose them out, do we? Do we not? Do we not chose up? You know what? I don't like how her hair looked. You know what? That's nothing more than a faulty stone. I don't. Did you see the way he looked at me? That's a faulty stone. She rolled her eyes. It's a faulty stone, is it not? But every day we seemingly are satisfied with that. So David being a godly man, and the Bible says a man after God's own heart, he took some time and he selected those five smooth stones. Now go with me to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, the first verse I want to read is verse 30. Psalms 119 and verse 30. The Bible says, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. So we read the psalmist here and he says, I have chose, meaning it's my decision, and I elected to do it. I chose the way of truth. Do you know how very narrow it is of the people that do that today? That really choose the way of truth. You know what? Most people want to choose the way of tradition. Just because, you know, Jerry Falwell said it, don't make it so. Right? Just, just because, you know, you know what we need to do? We just need to go with what the Bible says. That's choosing the way of truth. Now, what I have found in doing that, you know what? You may lose some friends over it. Not everybody that says they love truth, love truth. Did you ever think about that? What they love is what somebody's told them is the truth. And that's a big difference sometimes. But the psalmist says, I choose the way of truth. And if you, want to be, if you want to be in the Lord's will, and you want to be happy with your walk with the Lord, choose the way of truth. Say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what uh, my life is about. Now, drop down to 173. Psalms 119, verse 173. The Bible says, Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. Now the psalmist here uh, makes, makes this conclusion. Huh, if you help, when I choose your precepts, you're going to help me. When I choose your way, what's a precept? That's a broad concept. That's what a precept is. When I teach nursing, I give them precepts such as what is clean and what is dirty. That's just a broad precept. Now, the precept is this. I'll give you one. God is God, and it doesn't matter what you think about it. That's a precept, isn't it? He says, I've chosen that. God is sovereign. And it doesn't matter what you think about the truths of sovereignty. God is sovereign. He doeth all things well. He sitteth on the throne. And everything is under His feet. Everything. You know what? Uh, you choose some precepts like that, God be with you. God be with you. And so we see then that we as the Lord's people, as we begin to make these choices, when we make these life event choices, that we need to be very, very sure that we understand uh, what we're getting into. Now, uh, look at me in Deuteronomy. Uh, Moses is 
ending his life. Deuteronomy chapter 30, I don't mean he's committing suicide, he's at the end of his life. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. The Bible says, I call, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. Both thou and thy seed may live. Now I want you to see that Moses had cut them going and coming. And he even told them, I know, I know you're not going to make the right decision. Remember, he, he, he specifically, I know you're going to be wandering out here for 40 years. He, he told them that. He, he knew what they were going to do. Or I better say, what they wouldn't do. Right? He, he knew what their choices were going to be. And he says, but let me tell you, we're even now. Are you going to choose God? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve, are you going to serve the gods of this world? Remember what Joshua said? Joshua made a very similar statement right, right before crossing the Jordan River. He says, ye choose this day whom ye will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, I'll give you two things to think about like that. Number one, he was the ruler at that time. But he still couldn't speak for anybody right. but himself and his house. Right? Yep. You know what? I don't know what's going to happen in November, and you don't either. But what I'm going to worry about is 221 to Battle Court Road. Right? That, that's what concerns me. Me and my girls and Joey and Donna. And I'm not worried about anything else because you know what? I'm accountable for those. I, I'm, not, I'm not accountable about the red. Now, I will say this. I'm accountable to the Lord God Almighty for this church. I am accountable for that. So you know what? The only, the only thing I know to do with that is tell the truth and move on. If I preach the truth, I fulfill the great thing, right? And so we see then, we do make decisions every day. We make decisions of how we're going to present. We, we make decisions of how, you know, uh, you can say things in a lot of different ways, can't you? How, you know, uh, you can think of anything. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. A lot of difference in that, ain't you? Right. You can kind of choose the way you want to say it. And you know what? That's an everyday choice that many of us make. We, we really don't even think about how our words and our actions and our little curt faces even impact other people's lives. But we do have choices to make every day, all the time. Uh, Isaiah. Go back to the book of Isaiah. This time chapter 56. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, in the first verse, the Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, keep my judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it and keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let, his son, neither let the son of the stranger, which had joined himself to the Lord, speak, saying, The Lord have utterly separated me from this people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am dry. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me. Now, did you get that? As the Lord speaking to them, he said, Never, Number one... You be careful of people that come in. They, they, you know, there was a way to become a Jew. Most people don't realize that. But, but you, you read about the strangers that walked with them. There was a way to become a Jew. Did you know that? And it was by sacrifice and by circumcision. Both of those are bloody events, right? And, and, and you could become a Jew outside the Jewish faith. But he says, you be wary of those people. 
You be aware that they're around. Listen, they might not have your best interest at heart. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there that today preaching a lot of things, but they just may not have your best interest at heart. They, um, they may have a lot of people, but they may not have your best interest. Now notice the eunuch, and a eunuch is an individual who had been uh, spay, uh, uh, neutered, that, has no, that they no longer could father, father children. That, that, was an, that, that was what a eunuch was. Now the reason they did this is so that they could have their mind continually on the Lord. Now I'll say this, I think it was a stab in the dark at best. I don't think we can ever impact this flesh to keep its mind on the Lord. I, I think at best it was a tradition. At best. Because you know what, this mind is just as corrupt as the rest of our body. And, and, and you can't keep, it's impossible to, to dwell on the things of the Lord. All. So this unit was a little upset. The unit people had an issue and he says, I am, uh, <laughs> behold, I am a dry tree. In other words, I'm not going to have children. There's no, there's no vine that's going to come out of me. I will never have the, have, have the privilege. And he says, listen, eunuch, you've chosen well because you've chosen me. You, you've chosen the best thing because you've chosen me. Remember as it's given the uh, criteria, I think it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, that uh, concerning women. And said if they're virgins indeed. He said let them marry. If they want to marry, let them marry. But see, the best place was to be at Jesus' feet. But you know, it also said this, most people can't do that. In fact, Paul said that one time, he said, I would that all men were like unto me. But he knew they weren't. Right? And so, <laughs> it comes down to this choice. What's our choice? Are you going to love the Lord or not? Are you going to love Him with your whole heart or not? The Lord Jesus broke down all the commandments into two statements. Do you remember what they were? Love God and love man. That was it. Right? Love God and love man. So my, my question to you then tonight, what are you going to choose to do? Are you going to choose to love God? Are you going to choose to live your life? Or are you going to choose to dwell on His Word? Are you going to choose to come to the house of God? Are you going to choose to, to raise your children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord? Or are you going to choose to waste meaningless hours on this? Or are you going to choose to waste money on things that will profit you nothing? What are you going to choose? You know what? Uh, I see kids in school, and literally, we make them put these things up. And listen, I'm not I, I'm preaching to myself with this, because I know I spend too much time on this too. But we have a little thing, a little rag in the back, because we make them check them in. Because you know what? If you don't check them in, they're... And they're not listening to anything I have to say. So I said, put them back there. But this is the sad thing. I'll show you dismissed for 15 minutes. And you'd think that was the only food left in Clarksville. And that was the hungriest people back there. And they just run in there. Ooh! I'm like, nothing that important could have happened in an hour. I only lecture for an hour. But you think it would be. You know why? Because their lives are consumed by it. And this is the sad part. Most of the time, it's not even getting messages from honey or mummy or any of them. It's a game. I mean, literally, a game. And you're talking people in their 20s and 30s. You know what? They've chose to do this way too long, right? And you know what it's become? A habit. Just as vile... And just, as, and just as consuming as alcohol eats up every bit of all your time, then it has to be a habit, right? So we as the Lord's people, certainly we should choose to serve Him. We should choose to lift Him up. But then again, ultimately, the choice is up to us. Sovereign grace people don't like to say that, but the choice of service is up to you.